Hello, my name is Andrew and I'm an environmental science junior from St. Louis, Missouri. And this is... I'm Dr. Kim Mix, an associate professor in the biology department here at Loyola. Um, so welcome to our Facebook Live broadcast. Today we're going to talk specifically about our STEM majors, including biology, chemistry, physics, um, just to name a few. We're going to be answering a few questions that have been brought up and talk about what it's like to study and live at Loyola. Um, so we're going to start with a few questions that we received from prospective students. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below and we'll try to answer them live for you. So first question, what is the average class size in our STEM classes? So the average class size can range from 10 or 12 all the way up to 40 depending on the type of class. So for the laboratory classes that we offer, um, those tend to be smaller. 12 to 15 students, and then the introductory classes are much larger, sometimes 30 or 40, and then the upper level electives can be 10 to 20. So you have a lot of opportunities to interact with your classmates and also with your faculty members. Yeah, and just to add on to that, um, as like a freshman, you're taking your cells and heredity, which is ba your basic biology course and your general chemistry, and that's shared by a lot of the different STEM majors. So that's when your class sizes will be the largest. Um, but then as you get up into your junior, senior year, later sophomore year, um, they're more individualized to your major. So right now I'm in entomology and that only has 12 students in it. So it's a lot of student teacher interaction, it's great. Um, so next question, what do you do to have fun on campus? So as a student, um, there's lots of different places to hang out around Loyola, um, especially now today when it's nice and cold, um, relaxing outside with friends, just getting a break in between the classes, um, taking advantage of all the guest lectures that come to campus, um, and all that. Seems like there's always something going on. Yeah, exactly. In our SGA, they hold a third Friday of the month, and they get a bunch of different like bounce houses on campus or they get concerts on campus for students to go to. So there's lots of different activities for students to have fun. Um, so how late is too late to change your major? So you can definitely come in as an undeclared general studies major and explore different courses if you're not sure what path you want to go down. But really, um, Towards the end of your sophomore year would be the latest, I would say, that you could change your major. Certainly the science classes are um, very heavy in terms of coursework, so you want to make sure that you've got all your prerequisites taken care of, your adjunct classes taken care of, and if you decide to switch too late, um, it could be challenging to stay on track. Yeah, and I actually went through a small changing of my major freshman year. I came in as an environmental studies student, which is more on the public policy side of things, figuring out how to enact change through government, um, looking at the humanities and social sciences. But And then I changed it to environmental science, which is a lot more science class heavy. So um, when I used to not have to take a lot of science classes, I'm now taking a lot of science classes. But you relatively have two years before it becomes like you have to take extra years here. Um, so by the end of your sophomore year is definitely the last time you can change your major. The process to change is, is very easy. There's an yeah. online form, you submit it, it takes about a week to process it, and then you're matched with a new advisor in your new department. So it is easy um, to change and you certainly have support um, through your interactions with faculty um, in the Student Success Center to get some guidance about what's the best placement for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, next question. Is there laboratory equipment on campus? We have lots of wonderful mm -hmm. laboratory equipment on campus. So we are in the newly renovated Monroe Hall, which was completed about um, three years ago, a long process of renovation of an old building built in the 1960s, and now we have state-of-the-art facilities and state-of-the-art teaching and research labs. And those labs are equipped with everything you could need for biology research, physics research, chemistry research. And my own research uses molecular biology, so we have state-of-the-art tools to measure DNA, to quantify DNA and gene expression. And the equipment also extends outside of the building, so we have boats and we have vans for students to take mm -hmm. field trips with their professors and go out into the field 
to collect data, data and, and study ecology. So we really have plenty of um, equipment and students can access all of that. Yes. Um, so another common question that I get um, is what's it like to live on campus and how is the food? So on campus living, um, I enjoy it. I, as a junior and probably my senior year as well, I'll live on campus all four years. Um, there isn't a requirement at Loyola um, that you have to leave campus at a certain time. Um, and the facilities are great. Um, as an upperclassman, I get to live in a suite style dorm, so I get my own bathroom and I only share it with three different people. Um, and then the food on campus is also great. So we have our dining hall, which is the Orleans Room, or OR for short. Um, and they have all different types of food. They have a hamburger station, they have gluten-free options, vegan options, so there's plenty of food for whatever you might be wanting to eat that night. Um, yeah, and then we also have access to Tulane's campus as well, so if you ever get tired of our food, you can go to Tulane and eat their food as well um, on the same meal plan, which is great. Okay. So what does a student need to know to be successful at Loyola? I th so I think um, th you don't have to come in with too much knowledge. You just have to be prepared to um, learn and be open to learning from the teachers, being open to maybe changing your study habits because you might, there's a lot of changes from high school to college. Um, and the teachers here, and Dr. Mix can talk about it, but they're great. They're willing to sit down with the students and figure out um, where you need to study more, where you might be lacking, or um, where you excel. Yeah, I think it's important to, to build a relationship with your faculty, with your advisor early on. Um, talk about your plans. Talk about um, struggles that you're having in your classes if you're struggling. Um, to learn about the different resources on campus. So we have an excellent student success center that helps students get matched with tutors and different study groups. Um, so learning where all those resources are and feeling comfortable um, asking for support if you need support in your academic life or social life um, is really important. And certainly building those relationships with faculty and other students. Yeah. Um. So how much time will a student get to spend doing hands-on experiments in the STEM program? So that's a good question. Those hands-on experiments can come in a class. Mm -hmm. So starting in the first year of a STEM major, you will be in a lab class, whether it's chemistry or biology or physics, and you'll be doing hands-on experiments for the entire semester as part of that class. There's also many opportunities to engage in independent research with a faculty member, mm -hmm. and that can be done for academic credit. There might be opportunities to get paid in the summer to do research with a faculty member, and really that could be as small of a commitment as one or two hours a week, or it could be um, 40 hours a week um, in the summer, more of a full-time commitment, but there's certainly plenty of opportunities. Lots of faculty members um, are recruiting students to get involved in their research. Yeah and engage in that. Yeah, and going along with like the classes that we take, so um, your first two years, three years here, uh, while you're taking those basic level chemistry, biology classes, um, each lecture is paired with a lab. So the lab is working with the lecture where what you're learning in lecture, you get to do hands-on activities in the lab and kind of live out what you're learning in the lecture. Um, and as she was saying, there's lots of opportunities to uh, research with professors, and that goes on to the next question. So how much time will I get to do research with my professors? So you can reach out to a professor and find out what kind of opportunities are available. Um, typically, professors like to take students on um, in their sophomore year, where they have a long amount of time to commit to doing research. And then it just depends on the opportunity, it depends on the project. Some projects fit nicely into a semester, some are more suited to a two-year longer project. And many student projects culminate in a senior thesis, so some STEM majors have capstone requirements or senior theses, and where the research you do as part of that research, you can get academic credit for. And in the biology department, you can get up to six credits of research um, from doing your research. So, 
right. Yeah. Um, and going along with that, so I have been actually involved in research with um, my professor, Dr. Amay Thomas, um, since freshman year. She has students in her lab um, doing their own, developing their own research questions, developing their own projects. And she kind of, any freshmen or sophomores that are interested in doing research, she'll have them shadow them. So starting my freshman year, I was shadowing some of her students, getting to see what they were doing as their own projects. Um, and then this year, she's running a BioBlitz project where she's exploring what type of um, animals and plants and all that are in City Park. And so I get to develop my own research project around that question. Um, and so I'm researching dragonflies and damselflies um, and seeing what kind of species um, there are that are present in City Park and doing my own lab work. So it's pretty cool. Um, a peer mentoring network is really good in research as well to pair up an incoming student with an upperclassman yeah. um, so that the older student can show the younger student the ropes and train them in and then they're all engaged in the meetings and discussions. So, um, one common question that we always get is, what is life like on campus itself? So, Loyola University is a pretty small campus. Um, we have about 2,800 undergraduates, I think, um, which is pretty great. Um, as I'm walking from the dorms, um, it's like a five minute walk to my class, so you can get up 10, 15 minutes before your earliest class and get ready for the day um, and get to class on time. Um, and as you're walking, you'll run into different students throughout the day. Like I have trouble walking to a building without seeing at least five people that I know waving. So it's a pretty friendly campus um, and it kind of helps brighten up your day when you see people you're walking by um, waving from across the lawn. Um, and all that, I don't know, what is the teacher's perspective, but. <laughs> so I agree with all of that. It's, it's a really friendly campus to be, to be working on. The students are all really friendly. The faculty and staff are all really mm -hmm. friendly. And because we're an undergraduate university, that means that we do not have graduate students working in the labs and yeah. teaching classes. And that's really important for incoming students to recognize because that means they'll have one-on-one -on -one contact with the faculty member in all of their classes and they won't be taught by a graduate student and that also translates into the research lab mm -hmm. um, because they will be working with other undergraduates but they'll have more of a personalized experience with the faculty member. Yeah and going along with that something that I've noticed and it's throughout all of STEM it's not just biology um, but a lot of the teachers here aren't, they teach classes, but they all do their own research or they're all really involved in student research. So um, whereas one teacher may have three students in their lab, there's plenty of other teachers that any student that wants to get involved in research can get involved in research. And that's with our math department. I know um, one student, I forget, um, but they do research in the math department biology, chemistry, environment program, even in the English and history departments, they do research as well. So it's all over campus and it's great. Mm -hmm. Certainly a lot going on. So um, we've kind of discussed this, um, but what are the labs like on campus? So the labs are, are fantastic. The teaching labs and also the research labs are state of the art. The equipment is um, top notch and the students have access to all of that. My own research lab is set up to study arthritis, so I look at joint disease, which is one of the leading forms of disability in the United States, and I look at the cellular and molecular aspects of arthritis, trying to understand factors that are misregulated in individuals that have arthritis so that we can target those with new drugs. So what that means in my lab is I have facilities to culture culture and grow cells and then manipulate those cells as if they were in an inflamed environment and then study the downstream molecular responses. Cool. <laughs> um, so what do students normally do with their degrees? So I know for me, um, I'm getting to be almost a senior, so that's a big question on my mind. Um, and so I have the dream job with my environmental sciences degree would be to be a climate scientist at NASA 
to being on the forefront of research on climate change. I think that would be really cool. Um, but I think the main goal is just to continue doing research, maybe get my master's, um, and continue doing ecological research after my time here, um, and maybe become a park ranger at some national park. I've always thought that would be a really cool job. So there's lots of opportunities. I don't know um, if you want to talk about some graduates that what they've done. Sure, sure. So many students go on to graduate school, um, either to a master's program or a PhD program. Um, I've had several students um, come through my classes and through my research lab and go on to medical school. Um, some students go on to veterinary school. Um, more recently, I've helped to place um, some graduates into entry-level biotech and life science jobs. Um, particularly in the New Orleans area, so there's a growing culture of um, life science jobs. Um, there's a facility called the New Orleans Bio Innovation Center that has a number of startup companies that's looking for highly trained students that have research experience. So there certainly are opportunities to get really good, exciting jobs right out of graduation, right out of school. Yeah. Um, so that was the last of our questions. So thank you all for joining us. Um, I'd like to kind of do a plug for our fall open house. It's November 11th, and you can sign up and RSVP for our fall open house on loino.edu, L-O-Y-N-O.edu. Um, so thank you for joining us, and yeah.